What we've been introducing you to starting in the last video is the idea of a functional group. The, a group of atoms connected in a particular way that cause the uh, compound to go through different chemical reactions and have different properties. And this ultimately changes the function of the molecule and that is why we have these functional groups. Having a two separate molecules that have the same functional group tend to go through the same chemical reactions and tend to have fairly similar chemical properties and physical properties to some extent. The functional group that we're focused on in this video is the hydroxyl functional group. That means an OH attached to a carbon and this would make a molecule that we would call an alcohol. You may think of alcohol as one thing, but alcohol is actually an entire class of molecules. The alcohol that most of us are familiar with is just ethanol, one molecule, but mixed with a variety of ingredients. There are lots of different types of alcohol, and to give you an example, something like rubbing alcohol, also called isopropyl or 2-propanol. You see, this is a totally different molecule and has totally different properties. And those are just two out of an entire class of millions upon millions of different alcohols. So the next thing we need to know is how do we actually name an alcohol? When it comes to naming alcohols, what we're going to do is find the longest chain of carbons, but that chain of carbons must contain the OH group. If it doesn't contain the OH group, find the longest chain that actually does that is your parent chain. We've been using suffixes that have things like A-N-E -E or E-N-E -E or Y-N-E. -E. And what we're going to do to show it's an alcohol is change that E ending to O-L to make anol, enol, or inol. And that will be how we add the, the alcohol naming into this. Alcohols are considered a priority group. Having an OH in a molecule changes the function of that group quite significantly. And so its name is so important that we put it on the very end of the compound. When we number it, we also make sure that the OH gets the lowest number possible. This means we start to forget about the sum the sum is only important if you could number and get the same number, but really what you need to do is make sure that above all, the alcohol gets the lowest possible number that you can give it. From that point on, you just name substituents the way that you previously would. The OH is gonna set up a numbering system, so you just use the numbers that, it, that are gonna be given. And so things like alkyls and haloalkanes or halo halogens that are attached are just gonna be named using the same prefixes that we've learned previously. So it really isn't too much new. It's just adding OL at the end, putting a number in front and making sure that that OH gets the lowest possible number that we can give it. So now that we know the rules, let's take a look at some examples. So here I've drawn two different alcohols. You can tell that it's an alcohol because there is an OH in the molecule there's a single bond that connects that oxygen to the hydrogen. Now, to show you what this would really look like, I'm gonna zoom in on basically this carbon. What you would see is a carbon bonded to an oxygen that's then bonded to another hydrogen. That would then extend outwards to all of the other pieces that are attached. And you would have a molecule that looks a little bit something like this. Now, when we are going to name this, we need to find the longest continuous chain with the OH group. So that's this one right here, three carbons. So three carbons is going to be called prop. The single bonds that connect them tell us it's a type of propane, but having this OH means instead of an E, I'm going to add O L. So now that we know we have an alcohol and it is three carbons, we need to number this so that we get the OH with the lowest possible number. And it doesn't matter which way you do that. It's going to be in the position number two. 
whether I go one, two, three, or one, two, three. And this becomes two propanol. Down here, we have a slightly different molecule, and I wanted to point out something important. Some people think that this line then connects to another carbon at the end, but it doesn't. It shows a bond connecting to an oxygen, just as it did up here. So this means the longest continuous chain in this molecule of carbons that contain this OH is one, two, three, or you could go one, two, three, it doesn't matter. So a three carbon chain. This is still a type of prop, single bonds, propane, single bonds with an OH, propanol. Now, there is a substituent, but we need to number this first, and this gets the lowest possible number we can give it. And so right in front of the name, we write one propanol. Now, the next thing we would do is we name the substituent. And since this is carbon number one, that makes this carbon number two, and then this carbon number three. Remember, the OH is the priority and must have the lowest number. So that makes this a methyl with its one carbon branch in the two positions. We have two methyl, one propanol. So this is kind of a, a brief intro into how to name an alcohol. Let's try one that's a little bit trickier. So here is a molecule that is a little bit more complex than what we've seen. And the first thing I would say is, I know that this is a cycloalkane because I see that ring structure. So I'm gonna name that very first. I have a cyclo, and this cyclo contains six carbons. So cyclohex, single bonds, AN, and then OH group, OL, cyclohexanol. And now we also have these two groups. We have an ethyl group right here, and we have a methyl group right there. Now, normally what you would have done is you would have numbered one, two, three, four, but the OH group is a higher priority. So even though going this way gives you the lowest sum, you must give this the lowest number. So in a ring structure, it must be the number one. If there is one OH and, and then just alkyls, you must give it the number one. You then have two, three, and four as we then try and worry about keeping the lowest numbers here that we can. We went this way, you would get four and five, so you have to go three and four. Now, in the very front of the name, ethyl is going to get named first, so we are gonna have three ethyl, four methyl, and we have one cyclohexanol. So three methyl. Four, or three ethyl, four methyl, one cyclohexanol is how we would properly name this compound. So hopefully this gives you an idea of how we go about naming alcohols, gives you a little bit of an introduction into something where we now have a higher priority group and that ultimately fundamentally changes our naming system by changing the suffix. So. Uh, good luck as you practice this, and I will see you next time as we take a look at some more functional groups.